wondered why one day it is hot and suddenly a storm comes through and the next few days it's cold? Well, today we're talking about air masses, cold fronts, warm fronts, and why it is cold a few days later after a thunderstorm. Welcome to my channel, Michelle Gay Science Teacher, where we learn all about hands-on science, science concepts, STEM, and other engaging fun lessons that you can do at home or at school. So let's look at this first part. Let's see what happens when we have a cold air mass that meets a warm air mass or vice versa. First, I'm going to have a container of water. I'm going to put some ice cubes on this end. And I'm going to add some blue dye to the ice cubes where they're located. Now I'm going to take the red and add to this end and I want you to observe the red and the blue to see what happens. Now when air masses meet, you can have a cold front meet a warm front. When the cold air mass meets a warm air mass, the cold air mass will push the warm air mass upwards. And notice how the warm air mass is traveling towards the cold air mass slowly. When the cold front and the warm front collide and meet together, that cold front pushes that warm air mass up above. And when that cold air mass and that warm air mass and it pushes it up, clouds begin to form. Now, when clouds begin to form, the first type of clouds that form are called series clouds. These clouds, if you look up in the sky, they're just these whispery uh, horsetail-like uh, feather-like clouds that's in the sky. It's not even, it doesn't even look like there's a lot of clouds up there then. And then once those form and we still have our mass, air masses meeting together, then we have what we call the series cumulus clouds. These clouds look like fish scales and almost kind of like they're blanketing the sky. Once that occurs, this is occurring guys over a few days, then once that occurs, then you have what we call our alto stratus clouds. These clouds become dark and heavy, and that's when it begins to rain or snow. So when our air masses meet together, cold front collides with the warm front, we have our clouds and we know that a thunderstorm is on its way. Now, why is it cool later? Well, it is because once those clouds form and then it rains, guess what? It is moving on. And once it moves on, it leaves back a cold air. All the cold air is left because all the warm air has been pushed out. So if you notice here that the warm air has moved and then the cold air has stayed behind at the bottom. How do clouds form? Well, let's look first at my cup of water. Notice at my cup of water, it is a cold cup of water, but on the outside of the water, condensation has begun to form. You can see the whiteness around it. 
Well, the reason why the condensation is beginning to form is because the temperature outside the cup is warm and the water on the inside is cold and it's beginning to form little droplets on the outside because the cold has met the warm which we get condensation. So when clouds actually form, they form when evaporation occurs. That water has been heated by the sun and once it's been heated by the sun, it begins to rise. When the uh, water begins to rise, it has dust particles attached to it and when those particles are attached to it, those clouds or condensation begin to form those clouds that we see in the sky on a daily basis. We're going to do this little investigation where we make a cloud in the jar. You're going to need for this experiment, first of all, adult supervision. You will need a jar with the lid, some ice, hot water, that's why you're going to need adult supervision, and just some hairspray. Now, the purpose of the hairspray is to act as the dust particles, so we're going to need that. Alright, so first we're going to pour our hot water in. And as you can see, it's beginning to evaporate. Oops. Then we're going to put just a squirt. Put our lid on top. See, it's already starting. And we're going to put the cubes. Oops. We're going to put the cubes on top of the lid. Now I want you, let's see if we can get a little bit closer. Notice that the cloud is beginning to form. So I don't make any more on here. There we go. Now, so notice the hot water is evaporating. It's moving up, it has caught the particles, and now we have a cloud that has formed in the jar. You can do this simple experiment at home or at school, but just remember that you, in order for the cloud to form, it has to have heat. The heat has to evaporate, then you have condensation that forms, but with condensation, there are particles such as smoke and dust attached to those water droplets which form the cloud. Remember, when cold air collides with warm air, that cold air pushes that warm air upward, and when that warm air goes upwards, remember clouds begin to form. And clouds begin to form different types of clouds, and eventually we get uh, clouds like the cumulus or the cumulus nimbus, and we begin to get rain or we begin to get snow. All right, friends, I hope you enjoyed this video. And I hope you have a wonderful day. See you next time.